What is early binding and late binding in C sharp? The easiest way to remember the two is early binding is also known as compile time binding and the late binding is known as runtime binding. Let's start with the early binding. In the early binding, an object is assigned to a specific type at compile time. This makes it faster since the binding to the method or property happens during the compilation. Early binding, you have the advantage of the compiler's type checking, which can catch type mismatches and other related errors. The early binding also requires the inclusion of the specific namespaces or assemblies at the time of the compilation. And this type of binding is most common in the strongly typed languages such as C-sharp. Now let's take a look at the late binding, which is also known as runtime binding. In the late binding, an object is assigned to a type at runtime. The binding to methods, properties, or events happens at runtime, so it tends to be slower than early binding due to the overhead of reflection. Also, in late binding, there is no compile time type checking, which can introduce runtime errors if the code method or property does not exist or has a mismatch. This approach is typically used when the exact type of the object is not known until runtime or for dynamic object scenarios. The dynamic keyword in C-sharp allows for late binding scenarios and also the net reflection API is quite often used for late binding operations. And now let's take a look at some code examples that demonstrate the use of early binding and late binding. Okay, first let's take a look at the early binding code example. I have a class code book with uh, title, author, and ISBN. It has a single method which is called display details, and it simply prints the console the title, the author, and the ISBN of the book. Next, we create a library class which simply manages a collection of books. This is our list, which is a collection of book objects. It has a method add book which adds a single book to our list and another method which is display all books which uses the book display details method and it simply loops over our books collection and finally in the main method i create two book objects this is the first one this is the second one i instantiate a library object and then we add the two books and finally we call the display all books method now let's run the program quickly and it prints the title the author and the isbn for the first book and for the second book okay in this example the type of the object which is book and the methods display details add book and so on are actually known at compile time. The binding of these objects and methods happens when you compile the program. This is an example of early binding in C sharp. The compiler knows exactly what type each variable is, what the methods are, and can perform type checking to ensure correctness. Okay. Now to demonstrate late binding, I'm going to change the previous um, library management code example. Our class book remains the same. We have the title, the author, the ISBN, the display details method, which prints to the console, the title, the author, and the ISBN. Now we have a new class, which is called audiobook. It has a title, narrator, duration in hours, and a single method which is called play audio. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to print to the console playing audio for the title narrated by and duration. So um, the method is not going to play any audio right now. It is simply going to print to the console so we can see how the program works. Okay, now I have changed the library class so that it uses late binding you can see that we are using the dynamic 
keyword instead of the previous example where we used book. We're using dynamic since when we add the media and when we display it, or when we call the display all media uh, method, we don't know what objects we're going to have in this list. The display all media method again loops through all the media objects and it checks if the item is book. If it is, it calls the books method display details. And if the item is audio book, it's going to call the play audio method, which we have right here. And now let's take a look at the main method. I create a book object with the title, the great gods with the author, the ISBN, and another object, which is actually audio book. Again, with a title, narrator, duration, and hours. Then we instantiate the library object. We add the two medias. The first one is a book. The second one is audio book. And then we call the display all media method. Again, this is our method here. It's going to iterate over all the items in the, dynam in the dynamic list. And if the item is book, it's going to print the details using the display details method of the book class. And if it's audio book, it's going to call the play audio method. Now, let's run the code quickly. And as expected, we have one book and one audio book. So the book method simply prints the title, the author and the ISBN and the play audio method prints the playing audio for the great Gatsby and lists the narrator and the duration of the audio book. So in this example, the dynamic keyword actually allows us to handle different types of media without knowing the specific type of methods at compile time. This is actually the, a demonstration of late binding in C-sharp and the actual methods to be called, such as display details or play audio, are determined at runtime based on the object's type. While this offers flexibility, it also comes with uh, some trade-offs that I'm going to look at next. So you need to know when to use late binding and how to prevent some common errors. Okay, before discussing the trade-offs of using late binding in C-Sharp, let's quickly take a look at another code example which actually uses reflection. What is the reflection in C-Sharp? Reflection is a mechanism which allows you to inspect the metadata of assemblies, modules, and types at runtime. When you use reflection, you can discover information about objects, their properties, fields, methods, and so on. It provides the capability to dynamically create instances of types, invoke methods, access fields and properties, and much more. Reflection is part of the system reflection namespace. And while reflection is quite powerful, it can introduce performance overhead and should be used only when needed. Due to its capability to access private members and perform operations that might break the usual encapsulation boundaries, it should be used with care. Now let's take a look at our late binding reflection code example. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate how to use reflection and late binding in C Sharp. In order to do that, I have created a class library uh, project in my solution. This project is called Media Library. It has one interface, which is iMedia, one class magazine. And in my main project, which is tutorial, I will not add any direct references to Media Library. Instead, we're going to use reflection. Now let's take a look at the code in the Media Library project. We have one interface, iMedia, and it defines a single method, which is called display details. And the magazine class implements the iMedia interface. And the display details method actually prints the um, magazine title and the magazine publisher. Now let's take a look at the console application in my solution. I have created a class library, and this is where we use the reflection. Guess my reference using system reflection. We use reflection in order to allow our program to inspect and interact with objects, metadata, and assembly details at runtime. I have compiled the media library project and I have moved the media library DLL to my um, C drive. And the path of this media library DLL is C, and the folder is test. And let's go back to the code 
you can see in the main program, I'm creating a library object and then we are calling the load and display media details method and we use the path to the media library. And now let's take a look at the library class, which is where we use the reflection. You can see the using system reflection on top. And on this line here, we are using the load form method, which actually allows us to dynamically load an assembly at runtime based on its path. This means that the assembly is not referenced at compile time. So its contents is not known until we run the code. And if you take a look at the next line, this one right here, we are using the get types method, which uses reflection to retrieve an array of type objects representing all the types defined within the loaded assembly. And this line here, the type get method display details uses reflection to retrieve a method info object for the display details method of the currently inspected type, if this method exists. So if the method is not null, if the method info is not null, we use this line here, sorry, this line here, to actually create an instance of a type. And finally, we actually call the display details method. Okay, and back to the main method, as I already mentioned, we create a library object here, and we call the load display um, media details method. Now let's run the program quickly. And as expected, we actually call ma manage to call the method which prints the magazine title and the publisher. And if you remember, the method is actually found in the DOL project. Here's the method that we managed to call display details, which actually prints the magazine title and the publisher. Now, how does uh, this program use late binding. Okay, the late binding is a process where the association between a method call and the method's actual execution happens at runtime. So in this code, we use unknown assembly at compile time. We don't have any direct reference to the media library DLL. This means that we are not bound to any types or methods within that assembly until the application actually runs. We also use dynamic method invocation. Now, if you take a look at the this line here, display method invoke media instance now, this is an example of late binding. We are calling a method, which is display details, on an object without having any compile time knowledge or reference to that method. The exact method that gets executed is determined at runtime. Also, there is no compile time checks because we're not directly referencing methods, properties, or types. There is no compile time checking. This means that errors, such as trying to call a method that does not exist, will only be called at runtime. Okay, um, late binding offers flexibility in several scenarios. When we need to interact, for example, with com objects or dynamically loaded assemblies. When we use a reflection, it can be also used for versioning and avoiding dependency issues. However, it comes with several trade-offs. Now let's examine them briefly. The late binding can introduce performance overhead since there is need for runtime type resolution. And also there is a lack of compile time type checking, which can introduce runtime errors. It is also potentially harder to maintain code which uses late binding, since the methods, the properties, and events being called are not as explicitly documented in the code. And this was another quick tutorial which looked at early binding and late binding in C-sharp. Thank you for watching.